Hi everybody, I'm Roberta. Welcome to my home. I'm so excited about today's segment because for years I've had a gorgeous cornucopia as my Thanksgiving centerpiece. And today I'm going to share with you how to make this amazing centerpiece. And I know I seem a little excited about this, but it truly is beautiful, it's natural, and it's a real conversation starter between your guests. So what I've done is I went to the craft store and I got this cornucopia basket. They're readily available at this time of year. And now you can see that there's floral foam tucked in the basket. The floral foam was soaked for about 20 minutes. Now when you're working with floral foam, you always want to let it sink naturally into the water. So place it into the water but never push down on it. That would create air pockets. And once it creates air pockets, the water will never seep into the floral foam, which means your flowers would die much quicker. I've started greening my cornucopia with the eucalyptus. What you wanna do when starting this centerpiece is to outline the basic shape and to cover the mechanics. So I don't want the floral foam to be seen. Therefore, I want to build this centerpiece so that it comes out. Remember, it's a cornucopia, so you wanna give it the look of abundance. So I have Andromeda, and I'm just gonna finish greening. And really, there's, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You'll see where you, you know, it's just by eye where you think could use a few things. And now this is my favorite part. We're gonna use vegetables. And it makes it just so gorgeous and so natural. Look at this beautiful artichoke. I mean, this is really a focal point. So with just shish kebab skewers, just wooden skewers, you wanna cut them shorter pierce the end of your artichoke. Now the artichokes is one of the heavier things in the centerpiece. So I want the cornucopia to be able to support the weight of the artichoke. So I'm gonna place this on the top of the cornucopia. And then I've got this beautiful eggplant, baby eggplant. And again, with a skewer. And this, because it has that rounded shape to it, I want this to kind of come out and hang low. So I'm gonna put this here. Look how pretty that is. So now I have these beautiful or ornamental cabbages. They're so lovely. You can't eat them, but they're stunning to look at. And they have a very thick stalk, so you wanna trim it so that it will fit into the oasis. So I'm just gonna tuck it down here. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, now I think I want another eggplant. So you can see, there's really no right or wrong. It's all what looks visually appealing to your eye. Again, just trying to balance the weight correctly so that your cornucopia will stay straight. I think I can do one more artichoke. I'm gonna tuck another artichoke in. And then, we can add some flowers. Beautiful roses. This will be a great pop of color. Now before you cut your stems, you kind of want to hold it up to your centerpiece and figure out where you want it and how far you want your flowers to stick out. That way you can make one cut instead of several. So I know I want this rose to come out to about here. So I'm going to cut it right here. Off. I'm going to tuck it down in here. Isn't that beautiful? Like another rose up here. And again, you know, when I have guests over and they see this centerpiece, they just, they're awestruck. I mean, it's different. It's just, it's eye catching to look at. And you know, the great thing is, when you take it apart, if these vegetables are still in great shape, you can use them, so they're not going to waste. I'm gonna finish this up. I've got some hypericum berries, and I've got some solidago, and uh, finish up with the roses, maybe stick another cabbage in, a garlic, and when I come back, you're gonna see how beautiful this is. So the cornucopia is finished. I think it's just lovely. 
Now I'm going to show you another centerpiece alternative, and that is a gorgeous pumpkin filled with fresh flowers. I'm sure you may have seen this before, and usually the pumpkin is cored out, hollowed out from the inside, so you take all the pumpkin seeds and the flesh out of the pumpkin, and then it acts as the vase for the flowers. But we're going to do something a little bit different today and a little easier. This is a BHO holder. So the floral foam is tucked inside this. Again, you would soak it for 20 minutes or so. And remember, don't push down, let it sink gently into the water. And then I'm gonna show you this nifty trick. Instead of carving the pumpkin out, just made this little incision into the top of the pumpkin. You can see it there. And now all you do is put the BHO holder right down in that little incision, and that's your vase. Because the water is going to go right into the oasis. So the flowers are gonna get hydrated right from the BHO hold. So once again, I started out by greening so I can cover the mechanics. Now this is a centerpiece, so I don't want it too tall. I want it to have more of a flowing effect. If it was gonna be maybe standing alone on a counter, you could always make it a little bit taller. So I'm just gonna finish greening. Don't forget when you're making a centerpiece to always think about the back of your centerpiece because so often when you're making a centerpiece, you're looking at it from the front, but you always wanna make sure since it's gonna be viewed all the way around that everything's covered. So I have my eucalyptus. And now I'm gonna start with my flowers. So pretty and drapey. Okay, sunflowers. These are gonna be my focal point. So what I try to remember is that I want, actually I probably want this a little shorter. I want to almost make, for me visually to get started, a triangle. So I put one of my focal flowers up at the top of my oasis. And then I put another one on each side of that. So almost making a triangle with my focal flowers. One more here. Great. Now, some roses. Now when you're working with roses, remember to take the guard petals off. They're, um, they sometimes get a little brown. You just wanna take those off, trim it up. Now, I'm gonna stick these into the side, again, because I want more of a flowy arrangement versus straight up. So I wanna put the flowers into the side of the oasis. A few more. I work with one type of flower at a time when I'm first getting the shape. It just, for me, it makes it easier to visualize everything. A couple more of these. And this is another centerpiece that, again, it's, it's so beautiful. And it's also a great gift. So if you're not having the holiday, but you're invited, this is a lovely thing to make and bring your host and hostess. And of course, if you've made it yourself, I mean, that says so much. Okay. Put one rose right here in the center. And now I'm gonna continue on. I've got some beautiful asters and I've got some Viking palms and again, the saladega and I'm going to continue on to fill this piece of oasis and make this beautiful centerpiece. But I already have one centerpiece done. So I wanna show you how the finished product looks. I'm gonna lift this out. Now I'm gonna grab this. And this was done a little bit earlier. And you can see how pretty that is. Once all the flowers were in, I just finished with some of these leaves. Again, I got all of this at the grocery store. So I went to Stop and Shop, went to the floral department, got everything, even these decorative leaves, and that's how I made this centerpiece. I think it's just really beautiful. And the colors certainly 
say the season. And then I garnished with these little pumpkins, which are really sweet. And you can also add these to your cornucopia as well, these little pumpkins, they're adorable. So I hope I've given you some great ideas for centerpieces for your home or to take to your host and hostess for the holiday. You know, I have to say, I'm the first one who years ago thought, I can't do that, I'm not crafty. All it takes is a little practice. Go to the craft store, buy yourself some floral foam, and just practice. And I'm telling you, you too can make these beautiful centerpieces and be the talk among all your friends. I really am so thrilled that you could join me for this segment today. And I hope you join us again next week when we're gonna cover yet another Thanksgiving dish and talk more about the wonderful holiday ahead. Remember, anytime you have family and friends gathered, you have an elegant occasion. See you soon. Yeah.